Hey guys, this is Pora from Truths with Z. And I noticed recently on Tech Toodle or TikTok, this is what I call it sometimes, that there's been a lot of drama regarding a lot of prophets, a lot of leaders of God, and people who just don't think anybody's telling the truth. But <laughs> I wanted to give my two cents. First of all, we don't necessarily know anybody. <laughs> Let's be honest. There's a reason why God told us to not trust any man. Because we don't know nobody. And one of the things that God tells us is that we judge the outward appearance, but God judges the heart. Now, one of the things about Emmanuel and God being with us and the Holy Spirit, which is God being in us, is that we get that gift. Really, it's a gift to us, but it's a natural thing with God. To have the, spirit of this, to have the gift of discernment. We, with the Holy Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit will be able to evaluate someone's heart and tell us what's really on that person's heart. And so with this situation, the really only biggest thing I have to tell you is to two things. Watch what you say. The Bible says to touch down my anointed and do my servants no harm. Watch your mouth. Back in the day, one of the things that Yeshua often said is that the Pharisees and the scribes killed the Jews had killed the prophets that God sent to warn them about their sin. And if you remember the parable that Yeshua said about Lazarus, how Lazarus, you know, he was, he didn't even get the gr the crumbs from the master's table and how he ended up going. Uh, the, in the parable, he went into heaven when he died and he was in Abraham's bosom. And then the evil master, he went to hell. And then when he found out hell is real and that God is real, he was like, oh, please send Lazarus to my family to go tell them that they should repent of their sins and turn from their wicked ways because all this stuff that, you know, the prophets and everybody have been telling us is true. And he, what his narrative was is that if they saw a dead man come back to life, Nazareth, that they would believe. But God said, hold up now. No. Because when my anointed and appointed prophets went to tell you that your sin was sin and that you would get in trouble for not doing what God told you to do. You would burn in hell for your sins. They didn't believe. So why would they believe Lazarus? And so one of the things I think we have to understand is that persecution of prophets happened then and it's going to happen today. And persecution of prophets happened differently in the time of the Bible. They were stoning and killing folk. If we remember Yeshua, the attempt on Yeshua's life happened many, many times. It wasn't even just when they tried to get him at the garden of gethsemane when he was praying when judas betrayed him yeah judas betrayed him but there were so many occasions where folk were really there was one occasion when they tried to run him off a cliff there's just so many occasions where they tried to kill our lord and savior but now uh, god was like not like that my time zones away and so persecution of prophets is happening right now it's happening and it's happening because god said it would happen but it's also because wicked men don't want to admit that they're wrong and so we don't really know unless we know. And that's why our fellow brother, uh, one of our fellow brothers in Christ on this app advised people to go to prayer in God. Go to pray to our Heavenly Father. Go talk to your father about it. If you are having some sort of confliction in your spirit, you're not sure whether or not one prophet is right or another prophet is wrong, then go and ask your Heavenly Father. If you feel like you don't have the Holy Spirit in you and the Holy Spirit is not telling you um, what the truth is, then go and ask God. And if you don't, if you didn't ask God, then I really feel like you should shut up. Shut up. Okay? <laughs> it says it in Proverbs. Don't play with me. It says to shut up your mouth then. And so if you don't have anything that God is appointing you to say, I truly encourage you to shut up. It is actually... Opening your mouth and saying something incorrectly about someone who is a servant of the Most High Yahweh can actually cause you to die. And you'll go to hell. You'll go to hell. You'll die and go to hell. And so then the question is, would that the words that you uttered out of your lips because you got too much yap jap on the technology screens, would that have been worth you losing your spot in heaven in the Lamb's Book of Life and a true relationship with God because you keep running up your gullet. There's so many people on this app. And one of the things that I'm noticing is not everybody who's speaking against this specific prophet that we all know, our sister in Christ. Not everyone who's speaking against her is necessarily a false prophet. But if you notice those that are speaking up against her, they're never usually addressing the things that she's saying. 
for example, with the T.D. Jakes situation. None of the people who are speaking up against her are actually saying, no, T.D. Jakes is a man of God. T.D. Jakes is not a pedophile. He's not a homosexual. He would never do those things. But it's coming out that he actually is. No one's addressing what she's saying. But they'll do different things. Like, they'll address the fact that they don't really know her. They don't know who, where she's from. She's not under some sort of ministry. She's not under this denomination. She's not under anybody. She doesn't really call anyone's name other than the name of Yahweh when she speaks about her words. She only exposes and says the things that God is telling her to say. And so, just like any other situation, these people are humans. So it's important to not even say anything about anybody in general unless God is telling you to say it. I really just came on this app to tell you guys you need to be careful. I've seen two scenarios in two days of two people who are speaking bad or speaking falsely about a woman of God and they don't expect to be judged by God. So God didn't give you those dreams. God didn't give you those visions. Maybe because he didn't entrust it to you. Maybe because you are buddy-buddy with some people you should not be buddy-buddy with. Did we ever consider that? It's important for us to not judge unless God is telling us to put that judgment out. Only God knows what's really going on. The Bible says that you would know a false prophet by their false prophecies if the prophecy never comes to pass. So please name me one of her prophecies that has not come to pass. So God didn't give you a vision about the three days of darkness, but it's also in the word of God. So what are we chatting about? God didn't tell you that uh, the the bim babbity boop that most people got was not a good thing. So maybe you are lacking your relationship with God. Maybe you didn't ask, seek and knock. It's important for us to not do these judgments just because God is not telling us when God also tells us that he that we prophesy in part. He's not giving one person the whole story. The Bible also says out of two or three witnesses shall a thing be established. There's more than two, two or three prophets who are saying the same thing. And it's important. If you don't understand it, then shut up. Shut your mouth on social media and go and ask your heavenly father who you claim to love and serve so much. Ask God what the truth is. Stop going on social media bashing our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ when you don't even know the whole story. And if God didn't tell it to you, ask God why he didn't. Ask God what the truth is. Don't go on social media and you're making claims from an authority which people think or people can misconstrue the fact that you're a prophet. And now you're saying that someone else is a false prophet. And now it's just chaos and, and drama. Tohu vavohu up in the church that God is not supposed to be. God shut that down. It's not supposed to be tohu vavohu. We're supposed to have form. We're supposed to have structure. We're supposed to be loving and kind to each other. And yes, because there's a rise, there's a great rise in false prophets. What Satan is also trying to do in this season is get people confused. Division and chaos is what Satan thrives on. And so while God is exposing the false, the real false prophets, he's exposing the false prophets in their wickedness. He's got Satan is also attempting to infiltrate the church. And he really has infiltrated the church. And he's trying to make people call true prophets of God, false prophets of God by having other leaders and influencers in the church spread lies. The interesting thing about this whole situation is everyone can yap all they want, but at the end and at the be- in the beginning and in the end, God has the final say. God knows your heart. So if you know you're sinning, repent. If you know you're doing wrong things that don't that God does not like, you're saying things about God's people that you know you shouldn't be saying or you have no information, you don't got the facts, you don't got the stats, Mm-mm-mm-mm. I suggest you do that. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Because it's not going to look good in the end for you. To speak bad about God's children, you become an enemy. God says that he will bless those who bless us and curse those who curse us. When you say someone's a false prophet and the Holy Spirit is not in them, you're saying that they're an agent of Satan. You're cursing them. And so what do you expect to return upon you? The Bible says we have power in our, in our words. 
So be careful what you're saying and get off of social media and go read your Bible, please. And seek the most high because this app is not your God.